Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 9th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, of course, Microsoft patched Houston, who thought that after a long weekend, we get a little bit of a lighter patch Tuesday. Nope, certainly not the case. Now, 129 vulnerabilities with 23 critical. I think that's about sort of average, maybe a little bit at the low end even. But what's really interesting here are three vulnerabilities that are remote code execution vulnerabilities in services. The first one is a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft's SharePoint CVE 2020-1210 with a CVSS score of 9.9. That's also the highest CVSS score this month. The problem here is that if an attacker is able to upload a crafted SharePoint application package, well, uh, the attacker will be able to use this uh, to execute arbitrary code in the context of the SharePoint server. So here the real hurdle is kind of to be able to upload this application package, uh, but I'm sure attackers will find creative ways to make this happen. Second one, Microsoft Exchange CVE 2020-1687-5. The CVSS score 9.1, so still in the nine and uh, with that critical range. In order to exploit this vulnerability, all the attacker has to do is send a crafted email to a vulnerable Exchange server. Well, and that's what Exchange servers are good for. So. I would think this is definitely something that's possible to exploit. Code being executed would run as the system user, which I think is what the Exchange server runs as. So that's probably why it is the system user. But uh, please correct me if I'm wrong here. The third interesting vulnerability, a remote code execution again in Active Directory. In order to be exploitable, you have to have the Active Directory integrated DNS or ADI DNS uh, enabled on a server and the attacker needs to be authenticated to your Active Directory. So a couple more hurdles here, which is why this one only has a CFSS score of 8.8. And again, the attacker is rewarded for a successful exploit with being able to execute code as a local system account. Trying to rank these three vulnerabilities, the exchange one is the one that worries me the most. Now, Microsoft considers exploitation less likely, but given that exchange is supposed to receive email, it's really hard to sort of add any additional mitigations. SharePoint, well, sometimes you have to expose it. So uh, that's uh, sort of the second one here. However, you do need to be able to upload that application package. Uh, Another probably noteworthy remark here is that there are a total of seven critical vulnerabilities that are being addressed with this update in SharePoint. Last, the Active Directory one. First of all, the attacker needs to be authenticated, but this could be any user. So one fished user, one weak password, and the attacker would have a way in. Secondly, of course, you shouldn't necessarily expose Active Directory, uh, so that may prevent uh, some exploitation here. Really, of course, all up to the creativity of the attacker, which as I said before, should probably not be underestimated. No Adobe update for Flash uh, today, but we did get three updates, one for InDesign, then Adobe FrameMaker and Adobe Experience Manager. Now, talking about Flash, Microsoft reaffirmed this week its guidance that uh, January 2021 will be when you'll see the last update for Adobe Flash Player in Microsoft's web browsers. So after this date, it'll pretty much be considered dead. If you still have any, in particular, internal sort of applications that use Flash, that's also your deadline by which you want to have these applications converted to something else. 
And then we also have Intel sneak in an update and now two of their bulletins are for BIOS updates. Probably the more interesting one is an update for AMT, the active management technology also affects the Intel standard manageability. These are sort of enterprise uh, management uh, technologies that you often see uh, deployed in larger uh, networks. And it's an escalation of privilege vulnerability that's being uh, fixed in these uh, tools. So overall, pretty busy uh, patch Tuesday. The Microsoft, in particular SharePoint and Exchange vulnerabilities really should be patched uh, quickly. For next month, uh, we'll try something a little bit different. And I hope uh, to sort of make it live and sort of announce a little bit more formally uh, this week. Uh, we want to do a little bit of contest. Uh, who can guess uh, the number of vulnerabilities uh, that Microsoft will patch? next month and the way we'll run this is sort of as a little uh, poll on our website and we'll give away a raspberry pi to whoever is closest or of course if uh, there are multiple people that are really close or get the right number we'll just uh, raffle off among them uh, the raspberry pi so um, take a look for that and like i said should be live uh, maybe i'll get to it tomorrow uh, but uh, sometime this week that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.